Hi guys, it's me again, Administrator Allen from the Imperial Transit Authority. If you're watching this, you've made it to module number four, and you're well on your way to acquiring your official Imperial Freighter pilot license. But before we continue, guys, let's have a moment of silence for Steve, who did not make it past module number three. Your molecules will now forever be scattered across the hyperspace lanes, reminding us not to mess with the hyperdrive government. Amen. So today in module number four, we'll be taking a look at a variety of different species that can actually live in vacuum, and you might run into them while piloting your ship. A lot of these beasties are gonna be very dangerous, and they're gonna try to eat your cargo, and maybe even you and your ship. So keep an eye out for these things. We're gonna start off with a heavy, the Suma Verminoff. These were gigantic eight kilometer long squid space monsters that have several large tentacles armed with suckers and electrical stingers that can easily rip your ship apart or at least disable it by overloading your power plant. To make matters worse, these enormous beasts have very powerful psychic abilities and were able to even invade the minds of heroes of the Empire like Darth Vader. These things will try to eat everything in their path and should not be trifled with. Luckily, they are quite rare and usually in hibernation most of the time. If you do run into one of these things, you most likely are in the wrong part of the galaxy. Of the two Suma Verimov we have identified in recent times, one was drawn to the Cades Maelstrom near Kessel and went into a dreamlike state. It eventually was woken up by a bunch of smugglers and the Verimov basically chased the smugglers straight into a black hole and had its skin torn from its skeleton which is probably one of the only few things that can actually kill one of these things. The second was found in a classified location and used to guard one of the Emperor's greatest secrets. Again, if you've run into one of these things, you've probably really screwed up, but there is one technique that can help you get away safely, and that is by using your escape pod as a decoy. They say it was the Purgle that inspired early spacers to invent the hyperdrive so that they too could fly alongside the majestic space whales through hyperspace. The Purgle is an amazing creature growing up to 30 meters in length. They fly through space and sustain themselves off of cosmic gas, which is processed inside of their body into hypermatter fuel. This is how they're able to travel at FTL speeds. Which is also why Purgle are the leading cause of accidental deaths in hyperspace. Now, if you do spot one Purgle, keep in mind that they usually do travel in large pods. If you find yourself in the middle of a pod, do not panic and aim for the smaller Purgles that will minimize the damage to your ship. When striking a Purgle or any kind of space creature, make sure you accelerate through the mass. This way that when it hits, it doesn't bounce back and hit your S-foil or something else. Also remember these beasties are full of space fuel, so if you are in a tough spot and need some juice, you can always harvest it from them. Next up, we have the Oswath. Like most animals in space, these things were pretty large, ranging from 500 to 1,000 meters in length. But these beasties are relatively hard to see, and that is because they are transparent. They do become opaque once they die. Now, Oswaths are relatively peaceful manta ray-like creatures, and they rarely will attack anyone unless that anyone is Steve Irwin. No? It's, it's, it's an Earth joke. <laughs> Forget about it. Oswaths don't generally venture far from their home nebulas, but they can actually jump into hyperspace just like the Purgle, but they're a lot larger. And so in 3 BBY, our benevolent Emperor Palpatine launched a campaign to eradicate these manta rays because of their failure to register their hyperdrives with the Department of Transportation. Now, it is pretty easy to take out these pests if you do see them in the hyperspace lanes, and that is because two-thirds of their mass is actually their brain. So almost every shot on target counts as a headshot. Any of you guys out there with fathers and grandfathers who flew during the Clone Wars most likely will have heard of the Buzz Droids. These were terrifying mechanical monsters that would latch onto your ship, disable your weapons, shields, and engines, and then just vent you into space. Well, the Gretchen were the Yuzang Vong's bioengineered locust-like version of the Buzz Droids. They were designed to kill all of us technology-loving infidels. The Gretchens were completely mindless and destroyed everything in their path. As a matter of fact, once the Yuzang Vong launched them on a battlefield, they had to clean them up after the battle. These things were heavily armored with natural shells and could spew acid from their mandibles that could cut through most materials. When I say the word Verpine, a lot of you are probably thinking about their amazing ships they design, or perhaps the Verpine Shattergun. And that's because these industrious insects were known for their amazing engineering skills. But did you know 
they actually came from an asteroid belt originally, which means they can actually breathe in vacuum. You're most likely not gonna be running into a vert pine in the middle of space on your average shipping run. But remember, if you do have any problems with a member of the verpine species and decide to, I don't know, throw them into an airlock, you're probably not gonna be able to kill them this way. You're gonna have to use conventional weapons. As a general rule, guys, always avoid dark black holes or caves, anything like that. I mean, most of us, and by most of us, I mean us humans, not you xenodegenerates out there, have evolved a natural fear of these kind of environments. And that is because there are a lot of dangerous things usually living inside of them, like an exogorth. These are a large silicon-based sentient species that enjoyed living inside of the hollows of asteroids and could grow up to a kilometer in length. Now these things were not easy to spot, and some unfortunate spacers have even accidentally flown inside of these great beasts. Exocorps are generally peaceful, and it seems like they actually enjoy cultivating a diverse ecosystem inside of their bodies, but you don't want to get trapped inside of one or piss one off. Just don't get trapped in one or piss one off, that's because they have been known to be able to swallow entire Imperial-class Star Destroyers. During your pre-flight inspections, if you find some scuffs on your hull or some damaged wiring, it's very possible that your ship was the victim of a bunch of parasitic Minox. These were silicon-based life forms that lived in a similar asteroid environment to exogorphs, and sometimes even inside of them. The Minox were addicted to energy and would attack any type of battery or power supply they could get their hands on. And they can really leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere if you don't clear them off of your ship before you fly. The Nebrae are another type of flying pest that could be found both planetside and also in space. These limbless wind creatures were relatively harmless, but like anything guys, when you're traveling at 10 times the speed of sound, if you hit one of these things, it will cause damage to your ship if you don't have the navigational shields on. Nebra strikes are really hazardous, especially when you're taking off. I mean, you have such a small margin of error during these sequences, so it's always a good idea to clear out any flocks nearby with your deck gun if you see them. Star locusts are not like your garden variety normal locusts. These things are massive, easily the size of a starship, and their teeth are also properly scaled up as well. Sure, you could probably shoot down a single star locust, but these things travel in massive swarms and could even overwhelm the best equipped armadas. Luckily, we know that star locusts are attracted to specific magnetic pulses, and therefore we can control them and keep them away from population centers and shipyards. Okay, so star weirds might seem like a tall tale told by spacers to one another, but I assure you these things are very real. There are these humanoid looking ghostly figures with wispy white hair and sharp talons, and of course those terrifying glowing eyes. They can basically appear anywhere, whether you're repairing your ship in space or even when you're flying through hyperspace. Once they see that you're looking at them, they'll let out a uh, blood curdling scream and then just rush you and rip you to pieces with their talons. The only way to stop these things is by pouring water on them. No, I'm just kidding, you're, you're completely screwed. I mean, there's basically very little you can do against them. These things walk through walls if they wanted to. The only thing that could really trap them is a force field or a force user. So most of you will find yourselves in the middle of a horror slasher film that is just very terrifying. You'll probably end up having a very gruesome death. But it's just another one of those things you can't escape when you're a spacer. All right, guys, I feel like you guys are now properly prepared. This is the end of the lecture portion of module number four. Let's get some hands-on experience and hop into our ship. We're gonna practice some optimal ramming angles that will leave your enemy destroyed and your ship